Hey, how you doing? Debatosity here, so what are the chances of advanced extraterrestrial life existing out there somewhere in the vast and ever-expanding universe? Based on our galaxy, it's estimated that there are around 100 billion galaxies containing around 100 billion star systems, so taking these numbers into account, isn't the probability of at least a few hundred advanced extraterrestrial species existing out there pretty much 99%? A big problem with this question comes when you factor in the Bayesian analysis. The Bayesian analysis is a statistical procedure which aims to estimate the parameters of an underlying distribution based on what's observed. It seems intuitive given the magnitude of the universe and number of star systems in the sense that the right conditions for life must have been met billions of times. But when we analyse what we know about the necessary conditions for life to form and how certain we are of the accuracy of each element in our analysis, we can quickly realise that we can't say with any certainty that life exists on planets other than Earth, whether it's advanced or not. Before moving on, let's review why. The analysis would include the answers to the following questions. Number one, how many galaxies are there in the universe? Number two, how many stars on average comprise a galaxy? Number three, how many of these stars are the type that might even permit life? Number four, how many planets orbit the average star? Number five, how many planets in the average solar system are within their star's circumstellar habitable zone? Number six. How many planets in a habitable zone are the sorts that will be supportive to life? Number seven. How frequently will abiogenesis happen given the right conditions? When we start filling in our current best answers to that list of questions, we can soon see that we can't answer the main debate question with anything better than a wild guess. So let me give you the best possible answers I can give you based on those questions. Starting at number one. NASA says there are between 100 and 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe, but there is reason to suspect that the entire universe is bigger than what we can observe, hence that number may only be a fraction of the total amount. Number two. Not long ago, we thought our Milky Way galaxy had around 100 billion stars in it. But since we've begun mapping it, we now know that number may be as high as 400 to 500 billion. If we could be off by a factor of 5 on estimating the amount of stars in our own galaxy, then how accurate is the count going to be on the more distant ones? Number 3. Some stars emit powerful radiation that would doom life anywhere within its habitable zone. How many? We simply don't have a good estimate. Moving on to number four. We're just beginning to be able to detect other planets, but we're still limited in how well we can do so. We can detect large planets like our own gas giants when they transit in front of their local stars and dim its light. But the problem is, this method only works for planets that orbit in a path that eclipses their star. We can only make a very rough estimate of how many planets there are in the average solar system, and how many stars even form a solar system in the first place. I think it's worth noting that large stars turn supernova in far less time than it took for life to develop on Earth. This could mean that life may get going on numerous planets only to be blasted into a future planetary nebula when its local star explodes. Number 5. Of those planets, the methods I described to you in question 4 allowed us to detect, we're only able to approximate the orbital distance from the home star for a certain percentage of them. Most of the exoplanets we have identified have been found in the last year. This obviously means there's a lot more work to be done before we can have any meaningful estimates as to their frequency and the conditions we'd find there. Now as for question number 6, it's virtually the same as number 5, so just refer back to what I just said if you need to. Now the final question, number 7. We don't know how abiogenesis works, therefore we can't even guess as to how probable it would be given the right conditions. We do know that the conditions on Earth 3.8 to 4 billion years ago 
were acceptable enough as this is when life is thought were first formed. Advanced life took a very long time to develop on Earth, but life itself seemed to have started up quite quickly. But then of course, there's life not as we know it. We don't know if the conditions we have here are the only suitable conditions for life, or if life might be able to start on other planets or moons in completely different ways than it did here. Take all the uncertainties of question 1 through 6, then multiply them by the complete uncertainty of question 7, and you'll realise that we're nowhere near accurately answering the main question. The key thing to remember is, a large number of planets doesn't necessarily mean a higher chance of advanced extraterrestrial life. Many of you alien sceptics may also ask, if advanced extraterrestrial life exists, then why haven't they paid us a visit? However, when people ask this, I think they're neglecting the fact that anatomically modern humans have only been around for about 200,000 years, and the first recorded accounts in history being made a mere 6,000 years ago. Now don't forget that the universe is 13.8 billion years old. Imagine the various forms of life that could have come and gone in that time. For all we know, advanced extraterrestrial life could have come to our planet during the Hadean Eon, 4.6 to 4 billion years ago, when our planet was nothing more but a burning wasteland. Or alternatively, they could have come during the 165 million years that dinosaurs were around, or even just a few million years before our ape ancestors evolved, we may never know. In addition to this, I found this video the other day where Dr. Michio Kaku, a well-known physicist, talks about the possibilities of advanced extraterrestrial life forms, and something he said really caught my mind. If you were walking down a country road, and you came across an ant hill, would you go to the ants and interact with them, or are they simply not worth the bother? This could very well be the way that advanced life forms, millions of years ahead of us in terms of technology, perceive us humans as. We seem to think that everything revolves around us. We think that just because advanced life forms haven't dropped by during our time here means they never have. Ever. We never even think to look at what could have taken place before we came into the picture. But at the end of the day, until we find some other instance of advanced life or some principle that compels life to culminate in advanced life, we just make up the odds based on what feels good. It's unavoidable. It's simply the way our brains like to do things. We could be the first technologically advanced species in the history of the universe, or we could also be the first that are still in existence in the sense that all the other advanced life forms died off eons ago. Or of course we could be one of billions. Again, nobody knows. Personally, I do believe that advanced extraterrestrial life forms exist out there somewhere in the depths of space but not in the large quantities or densities that many people believe there to be. I'd say around one every few million light years. Until the next time, goodbye.